You bet. You bet. Hey, man, I, I tell you what, it, what a, I, I hope you understand what an honor it is to have Crossfire here with us today. Uh, they could be not in any just cowboy church this morning, but any church across the United States, but they chose to be here with Stillwater's Cowboy Church in Carthage, Texas. <laughs> And, and, and guys, uh, I, I told them this last night, but they were with us seven years ago when we first started, and they were at our very first outreach event. We did a concert on the square, and they came in, and uh, of course, you got all this equipment and things to put together, and they put all that together and, and played a few songs for us just to kind of get our name established in the community. And uh, of course, Randy was a, a lay pastor at Cross Brand, and, and Cross Brand was the church that helped us. Uh, get started and was our sponsor church and so man I, we just have a connection with these guys and we're just so proud uh, of what God's doing through your ministry and uh, we're just man excited that you guys are worshiping here with us this morning we, we love you guys I, I wanted to uh, I, I'm gonna give you this this is what I told him I said I'm gonna kind of do a mini message but in, in that I, I'm gonna preach like Randy Reeves this morning I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna stand up here for five minutes but it's gonna turn into 30 okay <laughs> So uh, anyway, I, I want to introduce a brand new series on January 1st, 2017. It's called A Gold Buckle Life. And you know, this, this is the time of year when we begin thinking about end results. This is the time of year where, you know, and a lot of people nowadays, they don't want to call it a resolution because we know resolutions don't last. But this is the kind of the time of year where we begin thinking about end results. Maybe some of us, we want to lose a few pounds, right? We begin thinking about that end result of where we want to be in our, in our, in our health of our body. For some of us, that end result maybe is, is our money. You know, we want to have a little bit more uh, flexibility with our money. We don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. So maybe we're kind of cutting down on some things or we're trying to manage our money a little bit better so that we can get to that end result where we're a little bit at more peace with our finances. For some of us, that end result may be that, uh, that, that we're going to just kind of be more intentional with our time. You know, the, the, the life just begins to suck everything out of us, right? And they got to go here and got to do that, and everybody's wanting something from me. And so maybe we're going to say no to some things this year. And so in that end result, there's going to be a little bit more time to, to, to spend into more valuable things like church or like family. And, and so we're looking towards that end result. Many of us, maybe it's a habit that we want to kick. And that end result is, you know, I just don't want this in my life anymore. I don't need that in there. I know it's, it's something that doesn't belong. And so I'm going to try to kick this habit, and, and we're looking towards that end result. Uh, another end result that we look at is just in our nation, and we're excited about maybe a new president, right, and coming in, and we're looking for an end result of our nation who finally maybe, maybe we're going we're gonna to just turn this thing around, and we're going to be a, once again one nation under God. We're looking towards that end result this time of year, this time of year. But wouldn't it make sense, wouldn't it make sense that we begin to focus on a more important end result, an end result of eternity, an end result that one day Jesus is going to come back and he's going to reward those who lived for his kingdom. Amen. See, this is what Revelation 22, 12 says. It says, look, I am coming soon, and I'm bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. Amen. Watch this. He says... Is that it? I thought there was a second part to it. I know there is. 13. I, I, my bad. I messed that up. Verse 13 says, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the first. I am the last. I am the beginning. And I am the end. And so can I just encourage you right now at the beginning of January 1st, 2017, to begin thinking about the end can I encourage you this morning that because you have a beginning and because there is a beginning, His name is Jesus Christ, He has always been, and it's time for us this year, this time right now, to begin thinking about the end result of where we're going to be spiritually. Isn't that more important than 
any other end result that we want to be in? Because here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I believe that if we begin thinking about our end result spiritually, that will, it will actually drastically affect where you want to be with your health. If you begin thinking about your end result spiritually, it will drastically affect where you want to be in that habit that you want to kick. If you begin thinking about the end result spiritually of where you want to be, it will help you manage your money better. It will help you focus your time into things that do matter in this life. And can we not agree this morning that if we'll focus on the end result of where we want to be spiritually, that it will turn our nation back to God? Can you agree with that this morning? But here's, here's what I want to show you, and the Lord showed me this this past week, and, and I want to share this illustration with you because it's, the, the truth is, is that when we get to that end result, when we get to heaven, when He comes back and He gives us that reward, He's not going to give us a reward for what we pretended to do for Him. He's not going to give us a reward, a reward for faking it well. He's not going to give us a reward for, for the, the religious activities that we were a part of. He's going to give us a reward for what was truly for Him Amen. and His kingdom. And, and so I want to illustrate it like this. It's kind of like the NFR jackets that all of the contestants uh, received. I, want to, I got a picture of the NFR jacket that all of the guys received. And each year it's a little bit different. And so this year it, is, it was the 80th NFR and so that's kind of a picture of the jacket there. So all of the contestants get one of those jackets. And so you kind of know who, when you're walking around Vegas and things, you kind of know who the Rodeo Cowboys are who made it to the NFR because many of them are wearing this particular jacket. Well, this particular year, it was a little bit different at the NFR because they actually uh, made this jacket available to fans. They didn't do that in years past. Only the contestants got this jacket. But this year... Because of the 80th NFR, they made this particular jacket available to anybody who wanted to purchase one. And just so happens, I received as a Christmas gift. Yeah, there you go. An 80th NFR jacket. It's a good friend of mine, they bought this for me, and, and I'm proud to wear it. And, and this past week, my, uh, my wife and I celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary. And so, I, yeah, come on. And so, and I'm, I'll tell y'all, I, am, I, am, I would not be where I'm at today if it were not for my wife. I, I promise you that from the bottom of my heart. But... We, you know, I always try to do up, you know, a big, we go out to eat or spend some time together on our anniversary. And so this year, we went over to Shreveport and we got rid of the kids and, and we went and had a good time. And, you know, we, we went and ate and we uh, went and saw a movie and, and I wore, for the first time, I wore this jacket out in public. And I'll tell you, I felt like a real rodeo cowboy. <laughs> And I tell you, I mean, I was walking tall, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just don't know, you know what I mean? <laughs> that, I mean, golly, this feels good, you know? I mean, it just, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so, I, I mean, I was just on top of the world. And so, man, I, you know, I got my wife celebrating my 15th wedding anniversary. We're out on a date. We ain't got no kids. And I'm a real rodeo cowboy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> I was just hoping and praying that nobody asked where I got this jacket at. Because <laughs> then I would have to tell the truth, right? It'd be like, well, some friends bought it for me, you know. Or, I, you know, I'd be, I, or I might be tempted to lie and be like, well, you know, the team roping up there. You probably don't really know. I mean, you know, I might. <laughs> and so, you know, this jacket just, just for, a, for a minute, it just felt good. And it was easy for me to appear like I was somebody. And you know, for many of us, it's, it's really easy for us to appear 
that we're doing well spiritually. For many of us, it's, it's easy to, to put on religious activity and say, I'm, I'm one of them. But the truth is, is that this, this is really somebody else's. This, this, is, this is nice and all, and, and this is mine, but, uh, <laughs> but this, is, this really represents somebody else. And guys, I, I just, I just want to stop this morning, and, and I think it's important in, in 2017 just to stop and, and, and say, are you pretending? Um, I, I really feel like that was just the message this morning that, that God had for you is, is January 1st, 2017, it's time to, to not pretend anymore. It's time to not pretend anymore. It's time to be real. You know why? Because we serve a real Savior. A real Savior. This is not fairy tales and unicorns, folks. And no matter how you feel about God, God is real. No matter whether or not you think that He, you feel like He answers your prayers or He hears your prayers, the truth is, is that his word says he hears us when we pray. He's real. Guys, I, I want to just share with you one verse of scripture. And as we just kind of, this is just kind of the introduction to this series. But in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says this. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ. What he's doing is he's speaking to every person who has received Jesus Christ into their life who is a follower of Him, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. The realities of heaven. The realities of heaven. Heaven is coming one day. He's coming back. He's giving a reward one day. The realities of heaven. It's real. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven not the things of earth you died to this life you died to this life and your real life your real life not your fake life not your pretend fairy tale life not put on religion and and fake it till you make it life no your real life this is who I really am this is what I'm really struggling with this is how I really feel my real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of His glory. Or in other words, you will receive your reward. You know, the, a gold buckle is the end result of hard work, of determination, of dedication. And I just wonder how many of us are striving for a gold buckle, in a sense, a reward that Jesus Christ will give to us on the day of judgment. That's what we're going to talk about over the next several weeks. It's going to be an amazing series. But this morning, I just want to encourage you in these three things this morning. When we talk about and end result, and how do I get there? There's three things I just want you to share, share with you real quickly. Here's what that means. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with yourself. You can't pretend. You can't fake it. Seriously, ask yourself the question this morning. Where are you spiritually? Where are you? I would dare say, even including myself, that we could all say that we're not where we want to be. Amen. But now is the time to begin thinking about the end result. Now is the time to understand the weight of what will happen if we don't begin living now for tomorrow. Amen. Where are you spiritually? Be honest with yourself. Second thing this morning is you just got to be honest with your church. Be honest with your church. Where do you need help? 
Do you realize that a church is not here just to, to, to come in on Sunday mornings and to hear some great songs and to hear a great message and then to go out those doors and be the same? But just like Brad was saying, that there should be fruit from your life. And if you're just connected to the vine, if you're connected to the vine, growth will happen. And being connected to the vine means you're connected to a church. And when I say connected to the church, I don't mean that you just fill out a membership card. I'm saying you're connected to a church. That means you have real relationships of people who really know the real you. Will you let your church help you? This, this 2017, will you get into a small group? Our small groups meet every Wednesday night. Will you get into a small group and get in, get in, get in a, a group of people who can, can love on you, who you can be real with? You know, there's just something, there's just, just a peace about knowing that <laughs> I don't have to pretend. And I promise you, this has never been a church that's been about judgment. This has never been a church that's been about, oh my gosh, I can't believe. This has always been a church who was established on the premise that whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, whatever you're into now, it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ is the answer. And we love you no matter where you come from or what you've done. Will you let your church help you? You've got to be real with your church. And then here's the last thing this morning. You've, you've, you've got to be real with God. You've got to be real with God. And so here's the question you've got to ask yourself this morning. What is it that you don't want to give up? Because that's usually the thing that we hide from God. That's usually the thing we kind of want to cover up from God, or we kind of want to just downplay. It's not that big a deal. But you've got to be real with God, because here's what you've got to understand. Whatever it is that's in your life that you don't want to give up, that thing put Jesus Christ on the cross. And he died to save you from that very thing. Will you be real with God this morning? And in that, it just simply is telling God, uh, Lord, I, I don't want to give it up. I don't want to. But in that same prayer, it's just a heart that says, Lord, I, I don't want to give it up, but I also I want what you want for me. And I need help. You just got to be real. You just got to be real. Guys, that's my message to you this January 1st, 20, 000, 2017. Will you stop pretending? Don't play church. Don't play Christian. Be the real thing. Be authentic. Be honest. Serve a real God. Would you just pray with me this morning? Father, we just tell you that we love you today, and we're just so thankful that you came and you died. And Lord, the, the scriptures say that while we were still sinners, you died for us. And Lord, we know that that means that you didn't expect us to clean up. You didn't expect us to fix ourselves. But you came and you died for us while we were in our mess. And Lord, I just, this morning I just tell you thank you for that. And so, Father, this morning, I just pray for anybody that's here this morning that, that maybe they have been pretending. And, Lord, maybe they're scared to be real. Maybe they're scared to confess. Maybe they're scared to get in a small group because they don't want to get close to people because they've been hurt by people before. Lord, I pray that you'll just cover that with your grace and your mercy this morning. And Father, I just pray that you'll make this a church that is full of authentic yes. followers of Christ. And Lord, that the people in this community would see something different in this group of people who assembles every Sunday and every Wednesday. And when you drive by here, Lord, there's always a car somewhere in the parking lot. Somebody's doing something. 
Lord, would they, would we, would we just, would you just allow us to be a lighthouse for people to know who you are and experience a real God? Lord, I just pray for anybody here this morning that maybe just needs to give their life to you for the very first time. Lord, would you just give them the courage to accept your free gift of salvation. If you'll keep your head bowed and your eyes closed just for a moment. If you're here this morning and you have never, ever Receive Jesus Christ into your life. And what that means is that you've just prayed and you've just said, Lord, <laughs> I, I, I'm missing something. And I want to be a follower of Christ. Would you just pray like this this morning? If that's you, would you just pray like this? Lord, I need you in my life. Just like that. Just say it. Lord, I need you in my life. And I'm asking you to save me today. January 1st, 2017. I know I'm a sinner. And I know you died on the cross to save me from my sins. And so, Lord, today I receive your gift of salvation. Not because of what I've done, but all because of what you've done. I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen.